Hi boys and girls, I'm Ann Collier, and I work at the Cultural and Natural History Collections at the University of Laverne. But today I'm going to be your time travel guide for the story of Laverne. Best of all, I get to introduce you to some very interesting people who are going to tell you stories about the city that you probably have never heard before. The story of Laverne is told by our community elders, people like your grandparents or maybe even your great-grandparents. And just like your grandparents, they have really cool stories to tell us and we can learn a lot from them. They will each tell you about what has been important in their lives about living or working here in Laverne. When you have finished watching and listening to their stories, you will have learned about community and family life in Laverne, how transportation created the town, the faith practices of people who settled in Laverne, how education is valued, all about commerce and even arts and culture in the community. Are you ready to take a trip back in time? Hi, my name is Don Kendrick. I'm uh, sitting in front of my house on 3rd Street and I want to talk to you a little bit about some knowledge that I have about the community of Laverne and the heritage that I have with it through the naming of these communities the community that they lived in, which was which is now North Laverne, uh, was not named. They didn't have a name for it. And my great grandmother came up with the name Laverne. My dad came here in 1929, started a chicken ranch, which I was raised on. Started working when I was seven years old on that chicken ranch. Never played sports because I worked every day after school and Saturdays and Sundays. So I have a great work ethic, uh, thanks to my father. My mother, a uh, school teacher for a long time, the elementary school in the elementary school here uh, in Laverne. Uh, originally, uh, today it's it's Roynan Elementary School. At that time, it, it was divided Roynan and primary, and she taught third grade in the primary. But she also started the first Girl Scout troop in Laverne, which is significant. It's, it's really um, people that care about this community that make this community the best it can be. It's all about the people. Um, it's, the, it's the citizens' involvement, the caring of the people. That's what makes Laverne, Laverne. Good morning, boys and girls. We're here at Hillcrest among some citrus trees, and we're going to talk about businesses and jobs and where people work and so forth. And, before we get started into uh, Old Laverne and New Laverne, I, I want to give you an assignment. I want you to think about where your parents work and talk to your classmates and find out where, where they work and what kind of jobs they do. And you can even talk to your neighbors and find out so that you know a little more about what people do here in Laverne. We had thousands of trees of oranges from Roynan School up to Foothill Boulevard. We had one grove, the Evergreen Grove, that stretched clear across where City Hall, Benita, clear over to Target, over to the cemetery. So it was a huge ranch. What did they grow on the, all of these trees? Well. They had a variety of citrus, and the main was an orange called a navel, and it's the best eating orange, and you can tell it has a little navel at the bottom, and you all know what navels are, because you'll have one. But they also have 
a Valencia orange, and it, it came in in the summer. The, the navel came in about Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, but the Valencia was a juice orange, and they, it came out in the summer. And then the other fruit that they packed were lemons, and lemons grew mostly up in the hills. And these groves went clear up to the foothills. And the reason the foothills were important is because that's where the warm air was. It would get cold in winter and they would have to smudge to protect the fruit and the trees. And the lemons were the most susceptible, so the lemons were above foothill up there. Up there. But you can see that we have some equipment here. One of the jobs in the citrus was smudging. And we have what we have here is a lighter and you would light the pot and it would flare up and it would look like a big bonfire and it would go up and it would create soot that would make a cloud that was over the, the city because the smudge pots would be growing for so long that this soot would just come down. It protected because it kept the warmth there, but the soot would come down. And in those days, we, we weren't poor, but we weren't rich. And, and we went barefoot to school. I didn't wear shoes till I went to high school. And as you'd go to school after a night of smudging, you could see your footprints in the sidewalk. So there is lots of different jobs that develop because of this growth that we have. You can go to LA now on the Metro. We used to have the red car. The red car was a street car that went from San Bernardino to the beach so you could get get around but all in all I think if if you will get to know your classmates and get to find out what kind of jobs they do you will help you become a better citizen of Laverne the more you know about the people and the jobs the more you love Laverne. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bill Lemon. I'm a former bus driver for Benita Unified School District. We're here in the district yard where they park the buses. And uh, we're in bus number 20, which is manufactured by the Bluebird Company. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about buses in general and some of my experiences as a bus driver over the past year. Well, one of the first things I want to tell you is what it was like when I was uh, first a bus driver. I started about 40 years ago. Uh, some of you may have known that there were a lot of orange and lemon groves in this area. Uh, by the time uh, my time starting to drive came around, there weren't very many left, but there were still a few up in the north part of Laverne. So I remember driving up there and seeing uh, the orange groves, and pretty soon the orange groves were gone and there were new houses. And some of you may actually be living in those houses up there, because I remember picking up kids in these big vacant lots that had once been an orange grove. Well, you know, one thing you probably didn't know about a bus driver's life is that they not only drive the bus, but they have to inspect the bus every time they drive. And if they're going to drive a different bus during the day uh, from the one they started out with, they're going to have to inspect that one also. So any bus that you drive, you need to inspect because you're responsible for it. I would like to leave you with a, a thought about uh, generations and, and people uh, who get older and things change for them. Um, I was driving for quite a while when I had my first encounter with uh, a child whose parents had ridden my bus. And I know teachers go through this too if they teach in the same district uh, for a long time. but. Um, 
I just want you to think about that, that uh, you might be, uh, someday might be a parent yourselves and uh, your child's riding the bus and you might have the same bus driver. And think about how the bus driver feels about that. I had that several times over the years where I <clears throat> pulled up to a bus stop and there was a man waiting with his child going to kindergarten. And I realized that the man had been a kindergartner also at one time and I had driven him. And um, that, that was an experience for me to come across that. And uh, I just thought I'd enjoy sharing that with you. My name is Mary Kay Ogden. I live at Hillcrest Homes, and I enjoy knitting and playing the piano. When I was in the third grade, I enjoyed playing hopscotch, jacks, shooting basketballs, playing with a hula hoop, and uh, jumping on a uh, yeah, pogo stick. That's the name of it, pogo stick. And I am here in front of the Laverne Church of the Brethren to share with you about churches and the importance of faith in our community. So I'm excited to be here today and share with you some places in the sanctuary that were important to me when I grew up. Uh, one is a doorbell inside the building. Uh, Another is the sanctuary area, and the third is the tower, which you can see rising above me. So I hope you enjoy our visit together. We are now in the sanctuary, and when I was in school, my mother worked. So after school, my father was in charge of me, and I would come to the church, check in with him, and play. One of the things that was fun to do was to invite my friends to come with me. And because the sanctuary slants from high down to a lower level, we would get on the floor and roll underneath the pews all the way from up here to down there, just like this. It was fun. I'm a little taller now than I was then, so I don't fit quite as well. So many wonderful, exciting stories from churches all over the valley. You may know the United Methodist Church, which is right across from Benita High School, was the site for two different movies. The movies were filmed there years ago and know that people who are members of churches throughout Laverne and San Dimas serve the community and the schools well. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. I'm really glad to be able to talk to you today. Now I know that each one of you fits in to one of these groups. You are either a Grace Miller Roadrunner, a Laverne Heights Lion, an Oak Mesa Owl, or a Roinen Raccoon. And I'd like to welcome all of you today because you are so lucky that you get to go to school in Laverne. Laverne has schools that really care about um, their students and you have teachers that care about you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of, of the schools in Laverne. We're here at Roynan School and we're at the library and it's so beautiful. They have done this gorgeous mural that honors books and honors the fact that reading and books are the most important part of what we do at, while we're at school. 
And I have so many memories of this particular site. When I was in kindergarten, first and second grade, I attended Lincoln School, which was on this very property. The school itself was a two-story school and it was in the corner where the field is now. So they were able to keep students in school while they built this one around it, the current Roynan School. And uh, my mother was my first grade teacher and that was difficult because I talked too much and so <coughs> she had to discipline me. <laughs> this school, this city, and all the schools in this city are such incredible places to get your education. You're all going to be a Ramona Viking one day and you will also be a Bonita Bearcat. And you're going to be on the Benita Bearcat right up the street from Roynan on D Street. And uh, it was originally down where Damien is. That was the original site of Benita High School. But you're going to love every aspect of being in school here in the Benita Unified School District. Good morning, welcome to Art and Culture. My name is Al Clark, I'm Professor of Humanities at the University of Laverne. And today we're standing at the university and we're gonna talk about art and culture. As you probably know, culture is everything you do in your life. It's the way you eat, it's the way you dress, it's how you learn at school, uh, it's how you get from place to place. Art is one part of culture. It consists of such things as painting and sculpture and architecture such as this beautiful Hanawalt house that we see behind us. Today, we're gonna to focus on art and most particularly that part of art that is architecture and painting and sculpture. As we finish our art and culture tour today, let's look at two contemporary works of art. Contemporary art can be almost anything, as long as it was made in our time. Uh, but it often is playful, exciting, and fun. And these two works of art, look at this. Look at this one piece here. What is it? It is a tree, or at least part of a tree, that's made out of metal. Uh, and it just crawls up in this beautiful, beautiful uh, spiral. Uh, with the lights from uh, the football stadium uh, behind it, and also one of the Teflon-covered tents uh, behind it as well. And then look at this standing rabbit. Isn't that fun? Isn't that cute? Have you ever seen a blue rabbit? You probably will never see a blue rabbit. In your town of Laverne, you've seen uh, very futuristic kinds of architecture with the Teflon covered tents. You've seen classical architecture with the uh, Miller Hall and Founders Hall. You've seen an old market that is turned into a library and has paint has windows painted on it what a delightful city you have to live in with the, so much art and culture to enjoy thank you Hello everyone, my name is Ruben Guajardo. I'm a lifetime resident here in the city of Laverne in California, and also I'm a woodworker for many years. I'd like to tell you uh, the story uh, of how I got here, and one project in woodworking that I had the pleasure and honor of making is right behind me on your library here in Laverne. It's the library doors that does have a history and a reason even why it's a tree. I'd like to share that with you. During those days and getting to around the 1980s, the city of Laverne was growing and the officials here wanted to do something for the residents. And we knew that uh, 
one thing, the a library that I grew up with, which was originally down on Bonita Avenue, a lovely library, but it was far too small. So they were trying to go through the process of building this beautiful building that is behind me. And the officials asked me two things. If we're successful in getting this library to come to pass, would you consider designing and making door entry doors for this library that would be unique? may be different than any other library that is here today. And the second thing was, would you consider making it out of this grand old oak tree that came from the Laverne Heights Elementary School? That's the history of your doors on your library and now they belong to you. Thanks for listening. Good morning, I'm Charlie Rosales. This morning, I'd like to talk to you about why I became a resident here in Laverne and why I uh, took a position on a planning commission and then looked for elected office as a city council member. In 1988, I was a police sergeant in a city not far from here. And things have gotten to the point where it was a very violent place to work. It was chaotic, it was noisy, and I was looking for a place to find sanctuary from that stressful situation that I was living in and working in. So I began looking in 1988 at Laverne as a place to make a home. It's important for your, each president to understand the, the responsibilities that you have to one another and to the community. My favorite president, John F. Kennedy, said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And you can apply that to the city of Laverne where you, where you live. Be helpful, be courteous, be respectful. If you see a fireman or policeman, wave at them and say hello. If you see city workers working in the street, fixing pipes and pavements, say thank you. Those are the kinds of things that you can do now. Perhaps when you get to be older, you'll want to volunteer and maybe you'll get involved in the city government. ago, Spain colonized, uh, sp Jesus, Anne. Oh, Two sentences, right. Anne. <laughs> Two sentences. I blew that again. Why'd you do that? Gonna happen, right? I just lost it all.